Hello, I'm Svetlin Nakov from SoftUni, the software university. I'm here again to continue teaching this free Java Foundation course, which, as you already know, covers important concepts from Java programming such as arrays, lists, maps, methods, strings, classes and objects, exceptions and some Java API classes and prepares you for the Java Foundation's official exam from Oracle. In this lesson, I will explain and demonstrate to with live code examples the concept of exception handling in Java. How to catch exceptions, how to use the try catch finally blocks, uh, how to use the exception classes in the Java platform such as throwable, exception, runtime exception, and how to throw an exception at runtime using the throw operator how to use the throws declaration in, in methods, and how to define custom exception classes. Finally, I'll give you some best practices to follow when you work with exceptions in Java. And as usually, you will have hands-on exercises to get practical skills, not just theory. Let's start. In this lesson, I'll talk about exceptions in Java. I will explain the concept of exceptions first, and then the throwable exception and runtime exception classes from the Java exception class hierarchy. Because in Java, we have a complex uh, hierarchy of exceptions and different types of, ex of exceptions have different uh, purpose uh, when you create Java programs. So later I'll continue with handling exception. I will explain how to use the try catch construction and also try finally construction and how to combine these constructions into try catch finally uh, complicated construction where you can try to do something if there is an exception or error or a problem you catch uh, the, the problem and you handle it with some Java code and finally uh, independently whether you have an exception or not you have a clean up code I'll explain this with many examples and you have hands-on exercises about this uh, later, I'll continue with uh, the concept of racing or throwing exceptions using the throw operator. For example, throw new uh, illegal argument exception uh, with some message. I'll show you how this works and we'll give you some examples. Finally, I'll go to best practices with Java and I'll explain you uh, some proven techniques, how to work, for example, with the exception messages, how to choose the uh, correct uh, exception type and exception, etc. And I would explain with the demonstration how to define cu custom exception classes in Java, how to derive from exception or runtime exception, how to create constructor, how to hold data in the exception object, etc, etc, etc. Let's start with the first topic. Before going ahead, let me introduce you the judge system because you have the opportunity uh, to send your solutions for automated evaluation. So you can test your code from this lesson and from the entire Java Foundations course, uh, we, which I publish as videos in YouTube and at softuni.org uh, here at the softuni judge system. So once you open this contest, you can uh, click the practice button and the, we have here the, the lessons. So you can uh, put your code here. For example, I'll give you uh, one from the, the clipboard. You put your solution in this box, you click submit, the submission is sent and you refresh here and in a few seconds you have uh, the results. So my problem is solved correctly and I can even click on the details to see what happens in case I have, when I have an error. So basically you can use this automated judge system to send your code for automatic evaluation and to know whether you have solved your problems correctly or not. So the next topic uh, will be the main topic for this course. It's about what exceptions are. Let me start with explaining what exceptions are. Exceptions, in short, are notifications about some failed operation. Operation which was attempted to be executed, but it failed. For example, you try to read a file, but file doesn't exist. Or you try to parse a number, but the string doesn't hold a number. 
So exceptions handle errors or problems or some unusual uh, situation at runtime during your program execution. And you can throw an exception to signal about a pro problem. For example, if you have a constructor in Java, uh, for example, a circle constructor, and the size of the circle is below zero, which is incorrect, you can throw a new exception and just tell the invoker of your code that uh, this operation cannot be executed because it's invalid. So you say throw new exception and you put an error message uh, in the um, parameters of the constructor of the exception class. So you can also catch an exception to handle the problem. So there are two main uh, things in exception. You can throw an exception to signal that there is a problem. And you can catch an exception to handle a problem which was already signaled by someone else. So catching an, ex an exception is done by this try catch construction. So you, you say try, you put some code that can work with or without errors, but in case of error, you catch the exception, the, the error, the problem, and you handle it with some Java code. Uh, I will show you more examples and we'll write some hands-on exercises to get a better idea about this and to learn exceptions better because they are important in the life of software engineers. Java engineers work with exceptions every day, constantly. So I'll tell you a little bit more about exceptions. Exceptions occur when the normal flow of the program execution is interrupted due to some problem or error or some strange condition. For example, you try to do something, but this thing cannot be done for some reason. And it, it's normal in the, in the real life. For example, if you want to, to switch on the lights and there is no, no power in the building, uh, you have a, a problematic situation. You will press the button for switching on the lights, but the lights will not uh, su switch on. Uh, this is an exceptional situation, an unusual situation, situation which needs to be handled uh, in a special way. So in, in the real world, you will uh, find a whiter or you will switch on the lights of your mobile phone on, or you will find candles or something else. So mm, Exceptions in programming occur when an operation fails to execute at runtime during the program execution. So an example is when you try to read a non-existing file or you try to parse a number coming from the user, but the, the text entered by the user is not a number. For example, you try to read an integer number, but the user uh, writes his names. His name's uh, simple. So exceptions allow the problematic situations to be handled at multiple levels. What does it mean at multiple level? It means that if you don't catch the exception, the invoker of your method will try to catch it. And the invoker of your invoker will also try to catch it. So exception can throw through the stack, can, can travel through the stack until they find someone who can uh, handle them. So uh, you are not obligated to immediately handle all your errors. They can be hand handled at multiple uh, levels, at multiple places in your code. This sim greatly simplifies code constructions and code maintenance. And once you get more experience, you will see how this works in action. So exceptions in Java hold detailed information about the errors. This is unlike uh, languages like C++ and C, where you just get an error, uh, something like error and some error code, for example, minus 30615, uh, which is not uh, explainable. In Java, you have an error message which tells, for example, cannot open file and the full file name for example, or uh, also a stack trace. The stack trace is something which explains at which line of your code the problem have occurred. So this is an example how we can uh, create a runtime and an handled exception. So we don't have a try catch block here and we try to parse something which holds a string which holds an invalid number. So 
Uh, obviously, this cannot be parsed to a string, and the parse int method in Java will fail, this operation will fail, and it will cause an exception, some kind of exception, which, if not uh, handled, will be printed at the console like this. Let me show you this. I will start the IntelliJ idea right now and I'll create a, a new project, new project called, for example, uh, a play with exceptions or uh, exceptions in Java. So, uh, like I have already explained to you, the name of the class, project, method, etc. should explain what's inside. So what's inside this pro project? Uh, there are, are examples about some exceptions in Java or some code related to exceptions in Java. So it's a good name. Okay, I'll have this, this project with, with this code. Uh, my code is here in the SRC uh, folder. And I have a main method here. So I will try to, 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 to parse a number int x equals to integer dot please parse this number, which is invalid number, for example. And when I run this program, I'll have an, an handled exception number, but it's not important. So it says Java one exception in thread main in the main portion of the of the uh, of my in the main parallel thread of execution of my program. Okay, just just assume this is in, in the in the program itself. So I have Java one number format exception. First, the, the class of the exception explains what's, what's the kind of the problem is. For example, number format exception, as the name explains, is exception which happened uh, while formatting or parsing a number. And it says uh, I, can, I have a number formatting exception for the input string invalid number. So it, it, it doesn't only tells you that you have a problem, but it also explains you what the problem is. And it also tells you at which line of code. So the problem happened here in the number format exception.java, which is part of Java SDK. This is the source code of the Java. And this is in the class integer. Uh, but basically, these blue lines here are your code and this uh, Gray lines here are the system code from from the Java virtual uh, from the Java API. So this is the source, and I can handle this using try and catch, and I should uh, specify a variable to to get the the exception inside, and I'll print. Uh, failed to parse the number, for example, and otherwise I will print the parsed number, something like parsed number is and the number. So if I try to do this, you can see that I will uh, parse the number. I will have this. So let me run this through the debugger to see what happens. When we have an exception, uh, it, it fails and gets directly to the catch block. And this catch block holds this exception. The exception may have some data in style, some string message, some type, uh, and it can hold that stack trace the entire execution chain uh, because you have a method which calls another method which calls another method which calls another method this is a method called invocation chaining and finally some of these methods uh, throws an exception because he cannot do the job uh, which he, this method should do and you can catch this so now you can uh, this is the, the, the result. So if the number is valid, for example, uh, 20, everything will work as expected, but this should be is. Sorry for the typo. 
parse number is 20. So if I debug this again, I'll have something like this. Uh, parse 20, this operation uh, passed successfully. So I continue and in the catch block, this code will not be executed. So this is how this works. It's, it's quite easy. So uh, exceptions hold error message and accept in the stack trace. The stack trace holds the chain of invocations uh, and the files and uh, one numbers where the problem have happened. So you can trace this. If, when you have an exception uh, like this, you can trace what happens. So what have happened is that we have parsed this, but we can uh, tell the exception to print its stack trace and we'll get the, the, this, uh, this information. This is the stack trace. So we can see that the main method have code parse int, which have code parse int here. And at this line of code, we have an exception, throw number format exception for input string. So this is how uh, the things have happened over the time. And this is very, very powerful to, to find the main, uh, the root cause for your exception. So uh, let's continue with the concept of the classes in, in exception classes in Java. So here we have this exception class, but this exception class uh, extends throwable. You, you know already about uh, from my previous lesson about uh, inheritance in Java and you can see that it uh, derives from throwable, implements some uh, interface, it's not in interesting, but in this derives from object because all, all classes derive from object. But the root of the exception hierarchy in Java is throwable. So Exceptions in Java are objects. They are something which holds data. They hold message, they hold stack trace, they hold, may hold other information. And throw, the throwable class is a base class for all Java exceptions. So it's at the root of the class hierarchy and it holds information about the, the cause of the problem, usually. Uh, an error message, message which uh, script holds the the text description and the stack trace, which is the snapshot of the stack trace at the moment. So we can uh, tell, for example, please uh, run x dot print stack trace or x dot stack trace. I can um, I can get the stack trace, which is an array of stack trace elements, or I I can tell something like get me the message. And it will tell me the message and even some messages can be translated to other language, for example, Japanese or, uh, or German. Uh, but it's not a good idea. Basically, you should use English when you write in Java because this is the international language which all developers will understand. So exceptions in Java derive from, as I already explained, Java and Trouble. Java one dot is a, the base class for exception, and the direct descendants from the trouble are error, which are uh, an internal um, error messages, which are not expected to be called from the program because they don't appear at uh, normal cir circumstances. For example, this is when you you run out of memory or when the Java virtual machine crashes internally for some reason or when the stack is overflow, etc, etc. Uh, examples are stack overflow error or out of memory error. These are some kind of unexpected and uh, let's say unpreventable Fatal errors. You can't do anything. You can just print, okay, I have an error and that's all. You, you cannot handle these exceptions. So they are called errors. And the other class of exceptions are the, the derivatives of exception. So they are used for exceptional conditions that user programs can handle and should, uh, in most cases, catch. Uh, examples are, for example, arithmetic exception. When we have some problem, 
uh, working with uh, arithmetic calculations, with mathematical calculations, or I/O exception, exception when we work with the, with files or we we'll communicate over the network, and when we have input-output operations, we, we try to send data or read data or write data or uh, open file or copy file or rename file or something, and if this operation fails, it mm, uh, throws an exception. Uh, like I/O exception. Okay, so there are some other uh, types of exceptions because exceptions could be of two types: checked exceptions. There are exceptions which should obligatorily be handled, just like the I/O exception. And we have exceptions which are not obligatory handled. For example, this one: you are not obligated to have try catch here, right? If you don't handle this, your code will compile and run, but it will not give you a, a compile time error. Okay, so for example, if I throw new arithmetic exception, uh, failed, for example, to divide by zero for example if you if you do this this code will compile so if we run build the project it will compile correctly without errors uh i'm, I'm sorry this this is from the previous task but if you compile this code it will compile without errors do you see okay so it build, build finished and but if we run this code it will crash at runtime Okay, but if we have I.O. exception, see what happens? This code will not compile. Why? Because this is a compile time exception. This is an exception which obligatory should be called. If you don't have try catch, this exception cannot be thrown. So your code will compile only if you have try catch this is a kind of uh, mm, programming style which tries to save you from problems so you are obligated to catch the exception otherwise uh, or i can here because i don't know how to handle this i can just print it, print it at the console so now the program will come the program will com compile because this IO exception can run, uh, can is called, is in, in try catch block, but it fails again at runtime. And this is what I have written. So, checked exceptions like IO exception are exceptions that should be obligatory handled. They are checked by the compiler during the compilation as already demonstrated to you. So there are also called compile time exceptions. This is an example. We try to open a file and to read from the file uh, with file and file reader and this code will not compile unless you use a try catch block. So because you don't catch the IO exception and Found not found exception. So I will import this file reader here without enter. Uh, this is Java IO file reader. And I will have this file also. But do you see here? Unhandled exception of type Java IO found not found exception, which is derived from IO exception. But basically, you are not allowed to open a file without handling the uh, situation when the file doesn't exist. In Java, this is forbidden. And this is a kind of defensive programming style. Uh, this is how Java works. So this code will not compile. You cannot run this code. You should either say throws IO exception, which means that this method does not want to handle this exception and it uh, throws this exception out of this method to, to the core of this method. So now I can run this and because this 
file does not exist, I'll have file not found exception. The system cannot find, find the file specified. But here we have file reader, which opens uh, the file, which tries to do some uh, sequence of method invocations. But finally, it will find that the file doesn't exist and will uh, throw the exception. You either should say try, try catch block and catch IO exception IOX, for example, and IOX dot print stack trace. You either handle yourself with a try catch block or you, you throw the exception, the exception class out from the method. Otherwise, your code doesn't compile. And this works only for these checked exceptions. When you open a file, you're obligated to catch IO exception. But when you parse a number, so if you have, for example, int x equal to integer dot parse int of some number, this can throw exception, see? throws number format exception, but this number format exception extends illegal argument and extends runtime exception. When uh, a class, an exception class extends runtime exception, it's not obligatory to handle the exception. This is called runtime exception. But if this throws found not found exception, which is a kind of uh, IO exception, which extends exception, not runtime exception, which extends throwable, you are obligated to catch this exception. So basically, we have two types of exceptions, checked and unchecked. Checked exception derived from system.exception and unchecked exception derived from system.runtime exceptions. And these checked exceptions, you are obligated to handle them or declare them as withdrawals. Unchecked exceptions, they are uh, exceptions which are not quite um, fatal. So you uh, should choose, you optionally handle them. You are not obligated to handle them. So this is the, the important thing which you, sh you should know about Java exceptions. This is a part of the exception hierarchy. So, as you already know, all objects in Java derive from system dot, uh, from Java one object. And the throwable class is in the base of the hierarchy. It derives from object, but uh, all exceptions in Java uh, extend throwable. And they can be errors or exceptions, which can be runtime and IO exceptions. So, these are the, the so-called abstract classes, uh, they are not abstract, but they are not uh, usually used directly uh, because uh, errors are some mm, internal problems in the Java virtual machine. All these errors are something which may happen at runtime, but you can, you don't have much control over this. This is something, for example, out of memory or um, internal um, error in the Java virtual machine or something like this. These are the user exceptions. These are exceptions which your code or APIs that you use uh, define. So they are runtime exceptions which are, let's say, non-critical and you are not obligated to handle them. And uh, other exceptions which derived from exception and don't derive from runtime exception, like IO exception and found not found exception. And for these exceptions, you are obligated to handle them. So these are the checked exception and these are the runtime exceptions and these are the errors. So we may say that in Java, we have three types of exceptions, errors, checked exceptions and runtime exceptions and I have already explained how they work. Let me show you how you can handle exceptions in Java using the try catch, try finally and try catch finally constructions. So how do exceptions work? You try 
to run a piece of code using the operator try, which I have already demonstrated to you. You can catch and the catch block will be executed only if there is an exception inside this try block, somewhere in it. And the finally block will always execute. Uh, not depending of, in both cases, if you have an exception or if you don't have exceptions, in both cases, the finally block will execute. So in Java, you can use try catch and you can try to do something. You may have several commands here in the try block and you can catch some mm, kind of exception here. So let me show you this in more detail because it's interesting. So I have try catch and I have some commands here. For example, uh, I print something like please enter a number. Then I have scanner scanner equals to new scanner of system dot in, for example. Then I say string wine equals to scanner dot. Please read, read the next line from the input. Then I said int number equals to integer dot parse int of, uh, of this input wine. And finally, I print, for example, uh, x by x or num by num equals 2 plus num multiplied by num, for example. Okay, so here I can catch an exception. And when I have an exception, I will print as out invalid number. So let's see how this works. I have a sequence of commands here. This could either throw an error or not. The next Y could also throw an exception or not. This could also throw an exception or not. This could also, etc. If I have some kind of exception, exception x or even throwable x i will print invalid number let me run this so i have i want to enter a number for example 20 and 20 by 20 is 400 okay but uh what will happen if i enter for example hello instead of a number I'll have invalid number. So this is how this works. Sometimes we may have uh, something like uh, we may want to enter two numbers. I'll show you this one. So I have uh, this first number, num1, and I will read also uh, a number two. This is the number one and this is enter another number and I don't need this scanner and I also have already this one. I will reuse this variable and I will use num2 and finally I will multiply these two uh, one by two. It's better to use brackets to avoid some kind of uh, incorrect concatenation, uh, incorrect joining of the string. So now, if I enter correct number, for example, 20, this will go ahead and will ask me for the next number. If I enter a correct number, for example, five, it will go here. But if at some point, I enter, I execute invalid operation. This code will here fail and it will go to the catch block in case of an error. For example, if I press, for example, X20, which is not a number here, this, it will not ask me for the second number. So exceptions stop the program execution immediately. They try to find a handler. I can catch 
here an IO exception, for example, uh, or for example, uh, illegal uh, argument exception, and print invalid number. But exception catch has filters. So you specify which exception you want to catch, and it catches all the uh, exceptions of these types or some derived type. So now this will not be uh, handled correctly because integer.parsint will throw, will throw format exception, which is not a kind of illegal argument exception. So see what will happen. If I enter invalid number here, huh, I still have illegal argument. I'm not right. So number format exception. Oh, it extends an illegal argument exception. Okay, I'll catch something which is not uh, the correct one. So here you can see that if I catch the base class, the parent class, it also catches the derived classes. Okay, but I'll enter some kind of exception. For example, arithmetic array index out of bounds exception, which is not related to parsing. Parsing does not throw this exception or some derived type of this exception. And now when I have some invalid input, I'll have a handled exception. This will not execute. So I can have even multiple catch blocks. So invalid uh, number is the first and the second could be, mm, let me show and I'll explain it later. So if I have, for example, illegal argument exception, uh, illegal argument exception, I'll print invalid number and I'll print invalid index out of bounds. So the idea here is that uh, in this, in during the execution of all these com commands, I can either have this exception, and this is the exception handling code, or this exception, or some of uh, its uh, derived uh, classes, and I have different handler, handling code. So here, if I have, for example, uh, string array one parts equal to one dot split of by space and I want to parse the first here of one parts okay if I don't have a space here I will not have this and this will be a array index out of range let me show you so now I try some number, for example, uh, hello, and hello will fail by invalid index. Why? Because I try to read this. Ah, okay, let me show you this through the debugger. So I enter here hello, and I have uh, this one parts which is an array of zero. It has position zero, but it, it doesn't have position one. So if I try to execute this with F8, it goes here and it goes to this catch. Okay, so uh, let's res re debug it again. And I'll press here, for example, hello, hello space 20. So the first part will be this and the second will be this after splitting by space. So what will happen here? One parts are array of two elements. So I have position zero, hello, and position 120. So num1 will now be 20. And this does not cause an error. And if I enter another number, for example, uh, I need to go to the console here. Uh, for example, this one, it will be incorrect and it will go here invalid number so invalid number uh i i have mistaken the 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 right um, keys 
for example, if I have x20, this will go like this. I, if I enter another, for example, something invalid, and now f8, it will go here. See, it didn't go for in the first catch block, it went to the second catch block. So we may have multiple catch blocks. And we may also have something like this. If I have extract method, uh, refactor, refactor. Where is the refactor in the menu? Refactor, please extract this method. Uh, um, play with numbers. So this method can handle only one of the exceptions. Okay. And the other will be left for the invoker. So that's why I told you that exceptions can be handled at multiple levels. So here I can have, uh, let me check what's in the clipboard. I can have this sketch block here and like this. So this method tries to do some something. In case of illegal argument exception, it will print invalid number. But in case of array index out of range, it will do nothing. So this, uh, this method will fail. Let me show you what will happen. For example, if I have uh, like this, 30, it's invalid index out of bounds. I want to show you also the exception dot print stack trace and here the stack trace uh, dot print stack trace because in case of problem I want to show you what what exactly have happened. So I have 20 and it says the main method have code play with numbers and it have code parsing and it have uh, raised index array index out of bound exception. So we have this line of code, invoke this line of code, which uh, raised an exception. So I can also show you what happens through the debugger because it's interesting. So I have something invalid, for example, this. It tries to parse this and it doesn't find a catch block here. This causes an exception, this line of code. So uh, when an exception is thrown, the first catch block is checked. Then the second catch block is checked if it exists. Then this method is returned back to the invoker and the next catch block is checked. And if you don't have it, you have an handled exception. So this is how it works. You can uh, handle your exceptions at different levels. So you can either uh, check in the in the method or in the method invoker or in the or it's in its invoker. So this is how exceptions work. They are multi-level by by nature. So I have explained how this works, how the try block and catch block. Uh, so the catch block can be used multiple times to process different exception types. And I have already demonstrated how this works. So this is how try catch works. And this is the, the way you can catch, for example, number format exception, which can arise when you parse an integer. But you can also catch just exception. And because just exception, exception, which is without number format, which is a parent class for, for number format exception, this will also work correctly. So when catching exception of particular class, always descendants or child classes are called to. So index out of bounds exception uh, can uh, handle also array index out of bound exception and string index out of bound exceptions because these two classes are descendants of this parent class. They are kind, these two classes are kind of this class. This is how inheritance works. So can you find a problem here in this code? 
in this code, we try to do something, then we try to catch an exception, then we we'll try to, to catch another exception. But we have problem here. And the problem here is that this will catch everything because this is kind of exception. So these two catch blocks should be exchanged in order for this to work correctly. Because this will catch also number format. Catching cat exception will catch also number format exception because it's a kind of exception. So be careful. This will not compile, of course. So if you have this, this code, uh, the compiler will tell you that you have a reachable code here. So this exception has already been called here. This is an error. Okay. If you want to do this, you should just uh, change the positions of these try catch blocks. Oh, uh, what happens? I have one bracket uh, in addition. So this is how it should be. Okay, like this. But basically, you should not have this. Okay, let's go ahead and solve a problem. You are, your first hands-on exercise is to write a program which enters an integer number in certain range, for example, from 10 to 20. You first read the range and it consists of two integers, start and end, uh, and the, the first is the smaller. And you, you print the range first, then you enter a number. If the number is incorrect, uh, your program should print invalid number, for example, 20. If 20 is incorrect and it will enter the number again and finally when you enter a valid number it will print valid number so this is how it works you first print this and the result is this message the program says okay i understand you 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 want to have a range from 0 to 20 uh, from i'm sorry it should be from 10 to 20 this is a bug in in my slides so 10 to 20, it says the range is from 10 to 20. And now you enter 5. 5 is not in the range, it's an invalid number. XX is, a, is not a number at all, so it's an invalid number. Uh, so this and this are both problems, but different kinds of problem. The, the first problem is that it's not in the range, and the second problem is that this is not a number. And the third attempt to enter a, a number was successful and it's valid number. Another example is that we define a range from mi minus 5 to 50. We work with integers only here. And if we enter high, it will say invalid number high because high is not number. Minus 6, it is out of range. And minus 1, it's valid number in the range. So this is how we can solve the problem. We can create a, a read number in range, which in in a endless loop tries to, to parse a number if it's incorrect. Uh, if it is correct, it returns. Otherwise, it says invalid number. And finally, we enter the range and invoke. Let me write this from scratch. Uh, okay, I will uh, return back the code without the bugs here because I want it to compile correctly, just to avoid uh, compilation errors here. Now I don't have compilation errors. And I'll create a new class which should match the, the name of the problem. Number in range. Number in range. The name, oh, sorry. Number in range. Okay, so this is my class. I'll have public static void main which will tell something like scanner, scanner equals to new scanner of system dot in. I should create a shortcut for this. I constantly write this code, but uh, okay. So I'll have something like a string 
range equals to scanner dot next one. Please read the next one. Dot split it by space, and this will be uh, will return the array coding the range. So the start range is uh, integer. Sorry, integer. Ah, sorry, integer dot parse of uh the range at position zero so if i enter for example 20 50 this will be range of zero after the split and this second will be range of one okay so i have uh at the same way and which is range of one and now i can just print the range was was start was dot 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 was end was this something like this let me check whether this works correctly it's not finished but let me check it from 100 to 200 so the range is from 100 to 200 let me uh, check this uh, this okay works correctly so uh later i need to read in uh, num equals to read number in range from start to end and it will also need the scanner because uh, the scanner is the source of uh, where we read the numbers and after we read this number we'll print valid number and the number but what will happen if the number is invalid this will read it again so this will this method will do something like wow true if you if you want to create a whoop and you don't know when the whoop will stop you just press uh, type right true and you will break at the time uh, when it should it should stop okay so here I will do something like this string input one equals to scanner dot please give me the next one from the input and I'll try to parse this so I'll try and uh, int number equals to integer uh, sorry integer dot parse of this input one and in case of incorrect of some exception here I can even have an exception this one here in case some of these com commands fail I will press something like uh, something like uh, invalid number and this input one. Oh, this will not gonna work i should return it back because i'll need this in input one okay but if number is in the range is bigger than start or equal and in the same time the number is less than or equal to the end then this is a correct number and I will return it correct number so or valid number valid number so I will return it otherwise I should print that it's invalid so I should say for example else this is invalid number because it felt it's out of range and this is because it's out of uh, it cannot be parsed so we may have two different reason reasons for having an invalid number and this will work correctly but i can also improve this like this so because in both cases we have this i can move this here sorry sorry 
I click the incorrect key on my keyboard. I don't need this because if I don't have return, if the number is not valid and if I don't return from this method, it will go here. And here in the catch, I should say that the number is invalid. So I will uh, uh, print an error. And after I print an error, the whoop will repeat because it's while well true. And it will ask me again about, about reading a num uh, about another number. So let me show you whether this works or not. I'm not sure. So please enter a number, for example, a range, for example, from 20 to 30. So I want to enter a number, for example, XXX, it's invalid. Minus one, it's invalid because the range is invalid. Uh, for example, I will uh, enter also 255, five. it's invalid. 31 is invalid, but 30 is correct. And the program finished. So if I have from minus 10 to 10, so minus 11 is invalid. 11 is invalid, but 5 is okay. Hmm. Looks like this works correctly. So let me go ahead and check this at the judge system. I open the judge system and I choose, oh, it takes some time to load, number in range, uh, this, this is my problem and I submit this solution and let me see whether it's correct or not. Hmm, looks correct. So that's all. Did you understand this? It's, it's not quite complex. So I, I read in a whoop numbers until I have a correct uh, number which is parsed successfully and it, which is uh, inside this, this range. Okay, so this is how this works. It's not quite complex and here I, I just uh, read the, the range and parse it and, and the code is readable itself. Okay. Let me explain you the try finally construction in Java. It is used to execute a cleanup code in all cases, when you have an exception or you don't have an exception. The statement is like this, you have try, you try to do some work, for example, uh, execute some commands or call a method, and finally, this block will always execute. So, this ensures the execution of given block of commands in all cases, when an exception is raised, or in the other case, when an exception is raised in the try block, when you have an error or you don't have an error. So it's used in most cases to execute a cleanup code, for example, releasing resources. So the pattern is that you allocate some resource R here, you use the resource here, and finally you deallocate the resource. Only if the resource was successfully allocated before that, because resource allocation could also fall. I will show you an ex example uh, with working with files in Java uh, to demonstrate how this works. But let's see this example. I have this try finally example. So this method first prints this code. Then it has try catch block, okay? So in the try block, I enter uh, some code. I try to parse it. This could either uh, succeed or fail. If it is successful, I print the parsing was successful and I return, return from the method, out of the method. But this return will first execute the finally block and then will return. So finally always execute this is an important thing. And if we catch if you have an exception here, for example, with parse minus one, um, for example, with parse hello, uh, and it's not integer, we'll have this, but after that, this will also execute. So um, let me uh, let me continue. Oh, oh, it's not here. I'm sorry. 
sorry, something happened. I'm sorry. Okay, so finally, we'll always execute. It will execute if we have or don't have this successfully. If we have return or we don't have return, in all the cases, the finally block will be executed. This will be executed only in case of error, of problem. This will be executed always in case of error after that or in case of return after that. And this block will be executed only if we don't have an if we have an error because after the catch we'll go here then here then here but if we have return we'll go at the finally and we'll not go here because we have return let me show you this through the debugger because it's it's a little bit uh, hard to understand so i'll have a, a demo of try uh, catch finally. So I'll stay have a public static void main and also this try finally example which I will invoke. And let me show you what happens. If I uh, I need a scanner here, so I'll I'll take it from this one. Copy, Control Tab, Paste, Control V and I'll run this code. So if I have, for example, 20, it's correct. So code executed before try finally. This was executed. Then I read this and this is parsed successfully and I uh, run return, execute return. Return will go first to the finally and we'll see, we'll print this and this will not execute because we have return. And what will happen in case of something incorrect, which cannot be parsed? So first we print this. It was printed. Then I enter the number here, which is incorrect. Then the parsing is failed. This fails and this, uh, this uh, message is missing. And this, these two lines will not execute. So the catch from the here, we go here and we have parsing failed finally we have this this cleanup code is always execute and finally we have this one because we don't have return and after the, after the try catch finally which have this so in the normal execution we have first step this then this and finally this but in case we have a problem, this return or this could change the program flow. This is how the try catch finally works. Let's continue learning Java exceptions. The next topic from my lesson is about throwing exception. When you use the throw keyword in Java, to signal the invoker that you have a problem and you are unable to execute the operation which you are trying to execute. So throwing an exception is uh, created by a statement like this. Throw new the exception type because this is an object. You create a new object and you obligatory uh, put an error message inside. So when you throw an exception it's important to throw the uh, correct class name and correct error message i will show you how this works so exceptions can accept message and also cause a nested exception because one exception can be caused by another exception which can be caused by another exception in big uh, projects we can have a big chain like this i will show you uh, for example, this stack trace. This is from the wireframe portal uh, running in Spring. So we have 
a kind of hibernate constraint violation exception, which says that it cannot execute batch update because something happened and unable to retrieve some segment, etc, etc, etc. But this is the stack trace. You can see that how many uh, methods were called from one another until this exception was finally called. This method were called by this method, by this method. So this is how exception work internally. You can handle uh, the errors at different locations in your code. And this exception here is caused by another exception, this nested exception, which says that you have duplicated entry for some key in your database, which is caused by another exception, which says that you have something similar. So this exception was called and was thrown again here, which is was called here. So we have a chain of exceptions which are nested one inside another and we have a very long stack, stack trace. This is the example I want to show you. So if we catch an exception like this, we, we do something. We catch an exception we, and we want to throw another exception and to, to, uh, do, to, to send this exception as an explanation, to nest it. Why we want to do this? Because we want to work at different uh, levels of abstraction. So, for example, parser for uh, medicine information could call, throw exceptions like invalid recipe, invalid medicine, something like this. It cannot throw exception like index out of bounds. So, when an SQL exception happens or index out of bound exception ha happens, the medicine library will catch it and will throw another exception from his um, own classes. This is because of the keep the, of the principle to keep the abstraction level consistent uh, inside certain library. So if the original exception is not passed as argument when you create the nested exception, the initial cause of the exception will be lost. And it's always, in most cases, it's better to have more information than less about the problem which have arised. So how do we throw exceptions? Uh, by the throw keyword in Java. Uh, like this, if uh, it is used to notify the calling code, in case of an error or unusual situation. When an exception is thrown, the program execution stops immediately. We have seen this, how this happens. And the exception travels over the stack until a matching catch block is reached to handle it. I have explained and demonstrated this already to you. Because when you have an exception, you it uh, the program execution stops. And the the runtime engine of the Java virtual ma machine tries to find a handler for this exception. If it didn't find it in the current method, it will uh, check in the invoking method and in the invoking method, etc, 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 until it finds it. Remember how this happens. If this method doesn't catch the exception, it will be checked here and then here and then here, so we can have a very long sequence of methods and none of them catch the exception. So we catch the exception somewhere else. So unhandled exception, which, exceptions which are not caught everywhere, anywhere, they just display an error message on the system console, something like this, and the program crashes, the program stops. This is how it works. Exceptions which are called can be retrown because we can because we have an exception object and we have a command to throw an object. We can either throw new something or we can try existing object that we already have. So we can this is called retrown of the exception. So sometimes we catch an exception we do something, for example, we print an error message, 
but we cannot handle the exception and we retrow it. We just want to uh, notify the user that there is some kind of problem, but we cannot solve this problem. If we can't solve this problem, we can only watch it, only display a, a message that this happened, but we cannot always uh, solve the problem. And this is in the real world also. We can find that there is no water, for example, at, the, um, at home, and I can't solve the problem. I can only, for example, call the repair service, but I can't solve. I can just say there is no water and throw the exception because it will reach someone who is competent to, to handle it. For example, the service, te the service technician of the, in the building. Okay, so this is another example. We have a method calc s squared t, which calculates a square root of certain value. We have a value and we want to calculate a square root. But if we uh, try to calculate a square root of negative value, we want to have an exception because this is an invalid operation. This should not happen. Nobody should uh, ask this function to, to tell the square root of minus one because it doesn't exist. There is no number which multiplied by itself uh, is minus one at least in the uh, real numbers in mathematics. So if we have math.s squared t, if, if, it, if this value is minus one, it will return not a number, which is a special value uh, in the double uh, class in Java, which says that this is invalid, but we, we don't want this. We want an exception. So we write this method and we can invoke this method like this, try, we, we try to calculate square root, but in case of arithmetic exception, which is thrown here, we write that, sorry, this is an error. So let me show you this uh, as an example, new Java class as QRT example. And I will print these two methods here. So I have calc s squared t uh, and I invoke it. And I, if I try to uh, make a S squared T of nine, this will, mm, sorry, I have, looks like I have, ah, I pasted this in the wrong place. I'm sorry. Okay. Shift tab works well. Uh, so now I can run this code and it will uh, print, it will parse successfully nine. For example, I can print this. Uh, int num equals or it will be double and I can print this uh, result. Uh, it's better to be named result shift F6. I rename it as result. Okay, so I run this again and square root of zero of nine is three. Uh, so it works correctly, but if I have minus 10, this will give me an arithmetic exception and this is what have mm, printed. I print at the error, system.error is something like system.print1 but prints an error message on the error uh, output stream in the console and I print the, the stack trace. I can just uh, here say that uh, enable or failed to calculate a square root, for example. I can handle this uh, exception differently. Instead of printing the, the, Java, uh, the Java standard error message, I can handle it uh, in, in a better way. Okay, so this is how this works. Throw new and it's important to throw the right uh, error class. For example, if I do like this, stack overflow error, it's not stack overflow. It's incorrect because calc escort uh, does not overflow the stack. It just, it does. Uh, the problem is arithmetic exception because it's a problem when you try to do some calculation. So, 
please use the correct uh, error type or find the, the most uh, uh, close to mm, semantically close name and do like this. Another uh, and, and use a, a good error message. Another uh, good mm, il error class is illegal argument exception. Is this okay? Yes, because you have value which is illegal. So this is also correct. You have passed an illegal argument exception. So here I can uh, handle all, all types of exceptions, not just this arithmetic which were changed. So if you don't, if you have problem with illegal argument, you can print illegal argument. Uh, illegal state, this is when uh, you can't do the operation because the state is not correct. For example, if you want to write something in a file, the file should already be open in writing mode. If it's open in reading mode, you can throw illegal state exception and you can fail uh, to execute the writing operation. Okay, so this is what I wanted to show you. And uh, now I we have a hands-on exercise. We want to write a program that reads an integer number and calculates and prints its square root with two digits after decimal point. And if the number is invalid or negative, print, print invalid. And in all cases, finally print goodbye. We should use try catch finally. And if we have nine, it's valid. This is the square root and it says goodbye in the finally. 20, it's also correct. So the output is this, minus five, gives uh, invalid because this is not valid uh, argument to the SQRT operation and this is invalid because this cannot be parsed. So we have two different types of invalid argument but both produce the same message invalid. So let's solve this problem. It will be very easy when we have this one. So we'll have something like uh, first uh, scanner scanner equals to new scanner of system of system dot in and then we'll have something like string one equals to scanner dot next next one okay and we'll continue uh, we'll have uh, int is it reads an integer number so it should be int not double int num equals to integer dot parse int of num of uh, sorry of this one input one and instead of this minus 10 we'll try to execute this and we want to print this uh, result but uh, formatted to two uh, decimal points after the decimal, two, two digits after the decimal point. So it's something like this. Uh, print f percent to f, new line. In case of exception, we'll print invalid, invalid with capital letter without dot. And finally, we'll print goodbye. Let me check whether this works correctly. If I have five, the square root is oh percent uh, dot to f. Oh, I have a mistake. Two point twenty four. If I have nine, it's three. If I have uh, hello, it's invalid. If I have uh, minus twenty. It's still invalid. If I have 1.5, it's invalid because we work with integers. This is by the problem statement. Uh, generally, this, this is not invalid number, but for this problem, it reads an integer. If it's not integer, it's invalid. Okay, so I believe I have a correct solution here. So I will go and I will submit it here in the square square root 
submit it's sent and i will wait a bit to have my results looks that this submission have passed all the tests i can see the details for uh, the input is 9 and this is the result for example here the input is xx this is the the result this is how the judge works so i'm happy that i have solved this hands-on exercise and i highly recommend that you solve it yourself as well let's continue with another feature of java the throws in method declarations this is a way to force the invokers to handle certain exception types and this is how it works a method normal method declaration could uh, declare throws and some kind of exceptions or several exceptions that it could throw. This means that invoking methods should catch this exception. If you have throws, this means that uh, the invoking method should catch this exception. It's a kind of obligated to catch it. So this is how it works. Uh, here I have a, uh, a method which reads a text file and we send the file name. So we, we create a bufferet reader and we open a reader which reads uh, this file with a file reader. So uh, the file reader is something which opens a, a text file and can read it uh, char by char and bufferet reader is something that can read uh, one by one from this reader and there we have nested readers and you know about string builder from my previous lesson it's a class which can concatenate uh, strings in a, in a loop and we have something like this please read the next line and if it's not no which means that the file have uh, finished or the stream have reached this, its end, so please append to the result this line and also append an empty line. Or this is just slash n. But uh, system dot line separator is better because it will work correctly in all environments, in Linux, in Mac, in Windows, uh, on your mobile phone, etc. And we have also try finally. We have try. So we open this reader. If it's open correct, uh, successfully, you should finally close it. If it failed to open, you should, this will uh, throw an exception and this code will not execute. So if we have an error during the reading of this file, we should finally close it. Why it's important to close a file? Because if you don't close your files, they will remain open and you will be unable to work with them. I will show you. Now I have this PowerPoint uh, lesson, uh, this one. So it's open in my PowerPoint. If I want to delete this file, this, uh, this will be uh, file in use. If you fail to close a file, you cannot deal with it. I cannot rename this file because the file is in use. Do you see what happens? So, because this file is still open in Microsoft PowerPoint. So, if you fail to close a file in case of error or in case of the normal execution, until your Java program terminates, it will remain open. It will hold resources and it may block other programs from using correctly this file. So, files should be closed in a try finally uh, instruction so but the the thing that i wanted to explain here is this throws exception when you have uh, the main method which uh, reads the file currently i will try to read the, the source code of this program itself uh, it can catch io exception and it is obligatory if you don't have this try catch your code will not compile I'll show you this. I don't want to write this code one by one, so I will copy it because I have already explained this. And this will be a code, for example, text file reader example, for example. This will be the name of my code. 
and this is the read text file I need to import without enter these classes uh, and the IO exception and the file reader out, out enter. So I imported these classes from the Java API and this is my code. I declare buffer reader and I do this reading. I already explained how this works and I will have on the main method which will do something like this. It will catch the, it will invoke the file and will catch the exception. So let me show you what happens if you don't want to catch the exception. See, it says read text file and read text files throws an IO exception. So this will say, oh, you haven't handled file IO exception. You are not allowed to do this. The code will not compile. It will give you compilation error. So we have a reported exception. If you try to remove this, this will not compile because this says, oh, you try to open a file reader. Please catch the file not found exception. You are obligated to, to check for errors. So you either have, should have here try and some catch, for example, here, or you say throw I exception. Or if you try the file not found exception, this will not be the only exception. You have also IO exception. But if you throw the IO exception, it will throw both IO exception and file not found exception because they have a uh, common parent in the class hierarchy, uh, in the inheritance hierarchy, which is uh, IO exception. So we have read text file here. And you should either throw the IO exception, which means that I don't want to care. This method says I, I don't want to care about IO exception. I want to throw it. So the method who calls this main, the caller of main, should handle this. And this method says the, the same. It says uh, if I want to read a, a file, I don't want to handle the IO exception because I, I don't know what to do. What to do uh, depends of the of the color. For example, if you read uh, an image, you will tell, oh, sorry, I, I cannot display this image. If you read uh, a, a, an invoice, you will say, sorry, this invoice is missing. But if you read the file and you don't want what's inside, you can, are not uh, competent to to know what happens uh, in case of error. So you should retrow the, the error. So you say throws. Okay, and now this should work. So I will try to, to, to print this file and it says file not found exception. So this method calls this method. It calls the file reader and the file reader calls the others, etc., 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 etc. And finally, we have this. So I will copy shift F6 this dot Java. And in case I don't have an error, this will be the result. I will read the code. This program reads its own source code and prints it in the console, which is not strange. The current it's current folder, which is this folder, slash src slash text file reader dot java. So this is the relative file path and it works as expected as you see. So this is how this works and this is how it should work. Uh, you can also throw other for uh, example illegal argument exception and because this is a runtime exception you throw it you declare that you throw it but you are not obligated to catch it so it's a little bit complicated if an exception is checked it extends exception and 
not runtime, not runtime, you should always either throw it or handle it with try catch. Okay, this is about the throws. Let me go ahead. So this is an example and I have already demonstrated all of this to you. Uh, this is another example how we can throw from the main method. Uh, for example, we are trying to read a file, uh, to write a file, to create a file. So create text file example and we have public static void main here and this code, uh, sorry. So we use a file writer, which is a class which can open files, for example, this file in the current folder, example txt, txt, and I can write something, but see what happens. This says, oh, you should handle IO exception. So I either should do like this, try catch uh, IO exception, exception, and print uh, something like failed, failed to write the file and the file name. Um, it's correct to do like this file name and to have the file name because failed to write the file. It's not a good, uh, a good error message. Uh, example.txt. Okay. So here I have the file name. And here I can print what file was enabled to be created. It's successful, so I have this file. I can write several things. So I can have a um, empty line here. More text. And another text. So if I run this code, it will override this example. Okay. Okay, it should be example. It should, this should be like this, but it's not important. So I have example here. I will delete this one. And this is okay. But if I have some illegal, uh, for example, uh, this this is illegal in Windows, uh, it will fail with an exception. Example, oh, <laughs> it doesn't work as expected, but I can do something like, for example, x, uh, this, this will fail because I don't have this drive. Failed to write file this. And I can also uh, print the stack trace for more details. So it's failed because the system cannot find the path. X mm, colon, colon slash is, is not, is not, uh, does not exist. Also, here I should have try and finally close because in case this write fails, the file will not be closed. So the correct way to implement this is with the try finally. This is the better way. The result will be the same, of course, and it will. It is like this, which is the same as the current folder slash this, and it will write this file. If I delete it and I run this again, the file will be created. Oh, I told you delete, delete, oh, no, delete, yes, and delete, yes, delete, yes. What happens? Uh, oh, it, it wants to, when I delete it, it, it checks the source code for mentioning this. So this is why this failed. Uh, okay, but uh, basically I, I can run this again and the file will be created. Uh, 
what I wanted to show you here is that if I don't want to have this try catch, I can this code will not compile because it will tell me please handle Java IO IO exception. So I can say throws IO exception and this will work as expected. Okay. So now if I can't write this code, for example, with this invalid path, it will fail because the exception will be thrown, it will be handled from the main method and will be handled by the, it will be printed on the console. So this is how this throws works. I think that's all about this. Let's talk about custom exceptions or how to define your own exception class and use it uh, instead of the uh, classes, exception classes for the, from the Java API. So to, to create your own exception class, you extend the exception and this class could hold some properties and some constructors. It should obligatory call the parent constructor with the message because otherwise it can it will be unable to be constructed correctly and it may hold some additional information so there are two main reasons to define your own class first is the level of abstraction if you write a file parser you may have file parse exception if you write a uh, for example, trading software for the New York Stock Exchange, you may have something like uh, order exception or something like bit exception or something from the business area of your software. So uh, it's normal that a library which puts uh, an orders on the stock market, they can fail with order exception or uh, insufficient funds exception, but it's not good that this method fell with an um, index out of bounds exception because these are exceptions from different domain. For example, what will happen if you go at the public uh, state administration and you send your documents and you say, I want to register my car because I purchased a new car and I want to register it to, to, to have a document for it. And they say, tell you um, illegal state exception. And you say, uh, what? Illegal state exception? They should tell you, okay, your car is not, uh, for example, it doesn't have past a technical check. So they should tell you technical check, not past exception. So if you write software, it's similar. Your software should throw exception from the same business domain that, that, you, uh, that your uh, software comes from. You cannot mix, it's not recommended to mix the business domain. And the other reason to create your own exception class is to hold more data about the problem. For example, if you parse file, you can hold more data about the exception. For example, at which line number your uh, parser have failed. You can also have other information, for example, what does this line number holds? And this will improve your parser. So you can create this, this, uh, this own exception. So I'll create, for example, uh, file parse exception, uh, which will extend exception and it will have out insert, out insert, uh, ah, why this doesn't work out is, uh, okay, uh, generate out insert. It fails for some reason. Constructor with, with a message. I will need a message and this is super, but this class will also hold a string wine number, uh, which is of, 
okay it's not string i'm sorry it will be int and it will hold also uh pr private string uh when text and now i'll have this uh one number as parameter and string one text and i'll have this dot one number equals to one number and this dot dot one text equals to one text and in the message oh sorry one and when i construct the message i will also print something like uh, plus uh, one number uh, plus the one number and uh, one number and and something like text equals to and plus the line text something like this so now i want to create a file parser that will have a something uh, static uh, static read ints from text file and this should uh, return array of ints okay and it will throw io exception and it will take as parameter the file name okay so i have the file name and i say something like uh, i'll have this text reader this will help me a lot and i read the file now and i will have list of ints uh, ints equals to new list of ints okay ah sorry list of ints sorry like this what happens oh it should be in java it should be array list so this is the interface list and it should be integer because in java this is how it works since c sharp is different it's built better but it's another story so i read the the wine and for each wine what i do is that I have something like uh, ints dot append dot add integer dot parse int of one. I read a line of numbers, so I'll have here a new text document, uh, new file uh, nums dot txt. And I have, for example, 10, 20, 30, 40, 100, and etc. So I have a, a list of numbers. And I will skip the empty one. If one.land.land uh, is bigger than zero, then I will parse and add this one. And I have try finally, but I don't have catch. I will need to have a catch and if I have an exception during the parsing of these lines I will tell something like uh, but the line should be here uh, one equals to uh, empty and I will need also int one num equals to zero and here I will have one num plus plus and if i have an exception here i will throw new file parse not 
fa fa parse exception uh, error parsing fau plus the fau name and I will have the line number and the line text. So this is unhandled exception so I should put it here in the throws. I have this throws okay I have this proof retreader etc I can write it like this with var uh, to, to make it shorter but this is how it works I have an array of ints and finally I will have this array of ints dot to array to array of and I will use new int uh, new int array uh, like this no to array uh to array of to to int array map to int okay i will i will just return this as list list of int because i don't want to to lose time now a list of integer i will not return array but this is how it works and in the main program I will have for example some numbers some ints from file and this will tell something like uh, file parser dot reads ints from text file of uh, ints dot txt okay and this will return ints and long sum equals to ints dot stream dot dot some kind of sum I don't dot int Okay, I will say something like uh, long sum equals zero for um, int x uh, of uh, ints sum plus equal plus equal x and finally I will print sum equals plus x. Okay. I want to read so see what happens here I don't handle IO exception and file parse exception so I'll handle both throws IO or I will say just throws exception because I will throw all the exceptions here and let me say check whether this works correctly or not build rebuild solution what happens here I don't have x I need to print the sum and I want to print the sum so it says the system cannot file ints.txt ints it because it's nums nums.txt now I will run this again and it says that the the sum is 1 100 okay I will add 30 to check whether the sum will increase yes looks like it's correct but what will happen if I have invalid number here invalid number here so see what will happen I will have a special kind of exception file parse exception this is my exception which is when I'm parsing nums.txt at line 4 let me check whether this line is 4 oh it's 5 so I should start here in the parser file parser I should start from 1 not from 0 I will run this I will run this again and now it will be at line 5 if I open this I'm at the 5 and the text is invalid number here 
Do you see what happens? So this file parse exception, file parse exception explains what the problem is. It should even be like like this to have a better explanation. So at the line five we have this, and even when we catch this exception, we can access the we can access the uh, file parse exception x we can print error parsing and we can also print the line number because we have it uh, we have x dot get line number oh i forgot to generate this out insert okay it doesn't work for some reason generate getters for these two okay and i now have a getters and dot get one number i can print one plus and text incorrect text which is x dot get text and what happens here is never thrown file parse exception is never thrown because this throws io exception so i should here add file parse exception and now this works so it has some mm, special cases like this, but this is how this works. So uh, if I have this file parser, it goes through the lines and sums the numbers. So in the sums in from file, I want to sum this and this runs as expected nums.txt invalid oh i think i have uh, changed the the file where is it file parser file parser where was this create text file example okay uh, i have uh, mismatched something but here and uh, in this example some means from file i can have try and i can catch the file parse exception x and i can print that error parsing the file uh, and then the name should be printed and i'll print the one number plus x dot one number and i will need also home home the one wrong text get one text and now when i run this it will tell me tell me what's the problem so this is how this works and also I, the final thing i wanted to show you is that uh, that this file parse exception it's extends exception if i extend runtime exception it you will not be obligated to to throw it so you can have io exception here and this compiles correctly i don't catch this exception i catch only the io exception and this method can throw file parse exception but it's runtime exception so i'm not obligated to catch it and this will work correctly but if i change this to be an exception now i'll have a problem because 
foul pass exception is obligatory and it should be handled. So I either use try catch or I just retraw it like this. And if I fix the problem here, the sum will be correct and this exception will not be raised. So that was what I wanted to explain you for the customs exceptions and this is a similar example. Okay, let's talk a little bit the best practices when we're working with exceptions the right way. Uh, when you use the catch block, begin with the lowest uh, exception in the hierarchy because otherwise the code will not compile. If you catch exception, all the exceptions, you cannot then catch arithmetic exception, which is lower in the class hierarchy. Continue then with more general, etc. Otherwise, you will have a compilation error. Each catch block should handle only this exception, which it understands and expects, which means that you should avoid handling everything because have, handling everything is, is not something you can do. For example, here in this uh, file parser, the file parser cannot uh, handle anything. What will happen if it handles here stack overflow? Can it work correctly? No, because if, if something happens here, for example, parse int, can throw a number format exception. If we have number format exception, we'll have a parse error. This is also better. If we catch throwable, this code can be misleading because if this line of, if we have out of memory exception, it will be also thrown. So the best way to write this code is like this, to handle the more specific exception, not the more general. Uh, another way, well, common exception types in Java, when we have an application and it works with no, it will throw no pointer exception. For example, uh, like this, I will show you here, uh, I have uh, string s equals to no. If you try to print the s dot, uh, for example, length, it will print a no, no pointer exception. Do you see? Another popular exception is illegal argument. For example, you want to create an array with minus five elements. Uh, if you want to access an array at index 20 and it has only five elements, you will have array index out of bound and string index out of bound. They are uh, both uh, derivatives of out of bound exception, which is their parent class. Number format exception, you know it very well <coughs> when you parse numbers, integers, or decimal numbers. <coughs> Arithmetic exception is when you try to divide by zero or some interesting um, arithmetic problems. Class cast exception is when you try to perform an invalid cast. I will show you this one. Uh, for example, uh, I have a spring and I want to, to cast it to integer. Integer i equals to integer. Please make from this string an integer. This will be class cast exception and this will not, not gonna work. This will even not compile, but, but at runtime, uh, for example, if you have object object o object sorry object o equals to s and you want to cast this object to integer this will not cause a compile time error it will cause a runtime error which will tell you that uh, if you try to print i it will tell you that this cast is impossible. It tells you no. Why it tells? Ah, because it's no, but if it's... Uh, okay, no is also valid for integers. But if you put here hello, you have a class cast exception. Okay. I exception, you already know it. 
it's related to working with files, with the network, or with some communication between processes, etc., etc., etc. And uh, when throwing an exception, you should pass a good explanation or message. A message which should make obvious what the problem is and uh, how to solve the problem. For example, I was unable to, to parse this file. I have an error at this line. For example, if we have a file holding 10,000 of lines, it's very good to explain where is the problem and not only you have a problem and exclamation mark so this is a good explanation message the site should be an integer in the range from 1 to 15 so if you have 1.5 it's not an integer if you have minus one it's out of range it's obvious what is the problem invalid state first call initialize so this gives you how to solve the problem what is the problem the problem is that you are in invalid state. But how to solve it? First call initialize. Okay. Unexpected error. If you get an unexpected error from your TV or from YouTube, what does it mean? You don't have a password or you didn't pay it for your TV. Error message should be self-explaining. That's that's the, the important thing here. Error messages, uh, exceptions could decrease application performance. So be careful and do not throw exceptions in the normal program control flow because sometimes this can slow down your uh, program so if you are in a high performance application beware and sometimes you may have exceptions which you don't expect like stack overflow out of memory internal uh, error etc 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 so that was all of my uh, topic today about exceptions in Java. I, ho I hope you enjoy it and please make your hands-on exercises because learning programming is only possible by doing so. You should write code, you should uh, create all the examples that I have created for you. To, to They should pass through your hands, otherwise you learn nothing. You will just listen, but learning is done by, by doing. Um, so, in summary, exceptions provide a flexible error handling mechanism in Java. You can throw exceptions which stop the problem of the program and signal for a, for a problem and they can be called through the try-catch uh, constructions and when the catch filter uh, specifies uh, the, the, the exception class and if you catch an exception, it catches also the the derivative classes for this exception. So try, catch and throw is something that you should know and unhandled exceptions crash with an error message. This is when you have throws in your main method or you don't have try, catch and you parse, for example, invalid number. And try finally ensures given code block is always executed and it's used to release resources, just like when I uh, close the file, uh, when I uh, open file, I have Try finally and in the finally I close the file to, to ensure I deallocate the resources uh, when I have a, an exception or not. So that's it. Did you like this lesson? Do you want more? If so, go at Soft New York, register and you will uh, get access to all the free code lessons from Narkov and Soft Uni. Subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notifications for new videos, uh, code lessons and other uh, coding uh, videos uh, because you will get access to the free code lessons. You, you will get help from the mentors if you register at softunion.org. We have a private uh, chat uh, for the members only. It's also free and you will meet other learners and discuss with, with them. So it's all free. So please join now. Soft to knee.